Hi all, welcome to Anjan GCP Data Engineering. So in this video, we will talk about a concept called clustering table. Okay. In our previous video, we have seen how table partitioning will work and how to define table partitioning. right? And so this is continuation of that particular video. This is one more concept which can be used to optimize your query performance and also reduce the query cost. Okay. Right. Now we will try to discuss some theoretical concept and then we will move on to the demo quickly. Okay. So when you create a cluster table, okay, so the table data is automatically organized based on the content of the column values. When you cluster a table using multiple or a single column, so order of the column you specify is very important. Why? Because so BigQuery stores data into a storage blocks. Right. Whenever you define a cluster based on a single or multiple columns, basically BigQuery sorts those storage blocks based on the values in the cluster column. So this is very, very important concept. Right? For example, let us say you are defining a BigQuery uh, table cluster on a multiple columns, let us say A, B, C. Then while passing the filter, you will have to make sure that at least you are following that order. At least you will have to mention the first column in that order in order to take the advantage of table clustering otherwise it won't work right so i i hope it is clear okay then so the main goal or end goal of the table clustering so it can improve the query performance and also reduce the query cost okay so and uh, now when to use cluster okay for example let's say you have a uh, query filter and you have a column based on some column you are querying that table and you are very frequently using that filter. In such scenario, you can use clustering based on that column. Okay. And for example, let us say you have a column again, you are using that uh, for a filter and uh, that column has very high cardinality. Cardinality means a number of distinct values in that particular column. Right? If that cardinality is very high, then you can consider clustering the table using that column. Right? I hope it is clear. Okay. Now, we will try to see a pictorial example. right? So, how this table clustering will help us to improve the performance and also mm -hmm. reduce the query cost. Okay. So, this is one table. Okay. So, now you can see the table, uh, this is an as is data, let us say. So, now you can see this table is not clustered at all. right? So, the data is stored right uh, as is and you do not see any sorting or something. Okay. Now, for example, say you have cluster this table based on the country. Okay. This is a this is one column right that is country. So, BigQuery will just sort the data based on the country code. This is a pre sorting mechanism. Okay. Now, let us say now you further cluster this table right using multiple columns. Right. Now, let us say this is being clustered using multiple columns, country and status. Now, the data is sorted like this. First of all, in the order you specified country as a first column and the say status is the second column. So, then it will sort the data using country first and then later it will sort the data using status. Now, whenever you try to query this table, you will have to at least mention country as a one of the filter criteria. If you try to mention only status, then you will not be able to take the advantage of this clustering. So, okay, this is very important concept and very important point to be noted. Okay, I hope this is clear. Right. So now you will have to remember few points right while clustering the table. Okay. So now these are the few things. Okay. Right now, BigQuery uh, clustering is supported most of the data types. Okay like uh, it can be string or it can be integer float or date okay it can be boolean also okay so now uh, ordering of the columns is very very important as i already discussed because the odd if you don't specify the first column which has been defined uh, in the clustering criteria then you will not be able to take the advantage of your cluster okay so that's why this is very important ordering of the cluster columns okay Next, there are some limitations as well. So, you can only use standard SQL that is Google SQL for querying cluster tables. 
right you cannot use legacy sql the second limitation is you can only specify up to four clustering columns right it will not support more than four columns okay and uh, if there is a string data type column is part of your clustering criteria so to sort the data it will try to use first 1024 bytes right then the rest of the bytes will be ignored for sorting the data this is also one of the important feature or important point to be noted okay so and you can also apply clustering on existing table as well but only thing is this clustering will be applied to the new data it cannot be applied on the old data all right so these are the few limitation i would like to discuss next we'll move on to the one more example we will see the effect of column ordering on table clustering okay for example let's say uh, you have this table okay so this table is clustered based on order date and also country and status right in the first case in the filter criteria where you are querying this table you haven't specified order date let's say then you have you are using country and status in your filter criteria then now the clustering feature will not be used you will not be able to take the advantage of your clustering okay so the query is not optimized at all since you are just ignoring the first column in the order right in the next example let's say you have only mentioned the order date and the country you just ignore the status still you can take the advantage of your clustering that means that query is optimized for clustering okay so this is how ordering plays a pivotal role right in using the cluster column as a filter okay i hope this is clear now we will see combining cluster with table partitioning okay so now this is one table this is not clustered and also not partition okay for example let's say you have cluster this table using country so that the data will be sorted based on the country code like this now you further partition this table based on this date now you can see there are four partitions so, so each partition will have a cluster column so inside that partition this data again it is being sorted based on the country now you can take the advantage of both partitioning and clustering so that means the query performance will be further optimized and uh, the query cost will be further reduced this is the greatest advantage when you combinely use partitioning along with the clustering okay i hope this is clear okay now let's we'll move on to the demo okay so in the demo what we will do we will try to create the cluster table and then we'll also will try to create the partition table and then we'll try to see the benefit of clustering okay along with the partitioning as well okay so now let's quickly move to the demo now let's examine this table okay so to see this table size this is almost uh, it has 200 gb of data okay uh, this table doesn't have cluster this table doesn't have partition also okay so let's try to examine the data now okay so it has four columns so one timestamp column and then remaining two strings and one integer okay so now uh, in the first step in the demo what we will do we'll try to create a cluster table based on this wiki column okay that is string data type right in the second stage uh, we'll try to create a partition table based on this timestamp so we'll try to create a daily partition table and then further we will try to create a cluster based on this uh, wiki column again and then we'll try to query this table based on different criteria like we'll try to use the only clustering filter and uh, and then we'll try to use clustering along with the partition and we'll try to see the difference in performance and also the query cost okay i hope this is clear now let us go to the queries so i have this queries uh, ready okay so what i'll do i'll try to so this i'll try to create this cluster table okay so it will just create this table means cluster table based on this wiki column okay so let's create this table 
Okay. So, now you have this table created. So, I would also try to explain this feature. You can create the same table instead of specifying your column name as a cluster column, you can even uh, create a cluster table using your SQL query also. Okay. So, I do not want to create it again. So, just to show you, I will just uh, have this query over here. Okay. I hope this is clear. Okay. Next, what we will do, we will try to insert the data into cluster table. Okay. It will take one or two minutes to insert this data because we have 200 GB of data. right? So, now you can see it is going to insert this much data into this cluster table. Okay, now, the data has been inserted, you can see this. Now, in the next step, what we will do, we will create a partition table along with the clustering. Right? This is a DDL script for that. Okay, just try to examine this uh, DDL script. So, it has been clustered by this column and partitioned by this column that is daily partition. So, I have already explained this concept in our previous video that is table partitioning with examples. Okay. Now, create this table. Now, we will have to insert the data into this table again. right? So, we are inserting the data into cluster and cluster and partition tables using this non-clustered and non-partition table. We have already examined this table. right? So, beginning of this demo. Okay. I hope this is clear. Now, we will insert the data. Now, the data has been inserted into cluster and partition table. Okay. Now, what we will do? We will try to query these three tables separately. One is this unclustered and unpartition table and next one is this cluster table and next one partition and cluster table. Okay. So, we will choose this query, we will execute this query. So, now you can see this is going to scan full table and almost 200 GB of data. Okay. Since it does not have this clustering and partition right available in this table. Okay. Just execute this query. Right. So, click on this job information. Now, you can see bytes process, bytes build almost 200 GB full table scan. right? So, in the second case, we will try to query this cluster table. So, here just try to note these two filters. Okay? So, here we are using this, this is a cluster column, but this table does not have any partition, but still we are trying to use this date as a filter. Now, let us let us try to execute this query and see if there are, if there is any difference in the the query cost and also the performance. Okay. Now, we will try to execute this, but still here it is saying the full table scan, but unless you really execute this query, you do not know whether uh, how much data it is going to process in case of clustering a table. Okay. So, now execute this query. It is done. So, go to the job information. Now, you can see so, the data scanning is drastically reduced. right? So, earlier it was using full table scan, now it is using only 263 MB. Okay? So, in case of clustering, you will come to know actual bytes build or actual byte processed after you successfully execute the query. right? In case of partitioning, before you execute the query itself, you will come to know how much data it is going to process. That is one important point to be noted whenever you are working with the partitioning or clustering tables. Okay? So, I hope this is clear. Now, we are going to query a table where it is clustered and also partitioned. Okay? So, just note this. Now, that bytes build is drastically reduced. Now, it will further reduce that bytes build using partition and clustering. Okay? So, now, we says here itself this has been decreased since it is a partition because you have a partitioning on this date filter. It knows so what are the specific partition it is going to scan. That is why it is just showing that reduced amount of data which will be scanned using uh, while you are executing this query. Okay? So, now execute this query, go to the job information. Now, you can see 
it further decreased earlier it was 250 240 now you can see it this bytes bill or bytes process further decreased right this is a very powerful uh, way of using partitioning and clustering combinedly to reduce your query cost and also to improve your query performance to in this scenario you haven't seen the significant difference in the query performance but uh, when you have a joins and uh, um, if you have to scan very huge data in terabytes and then you will come to know the query performance difference also okay so i hope this is clear and uh, that's it for this video we will meet in the next video thank you thank you very much for watching this video